All right, so in this video, we're gonna look a little bit more carefully at the curl of a vector field, okay? So we tend to work pretty much in R3 here, although like I said, there, you can talk about curl in two dimensions, but um, most of the time we're given some C1 vector field, F, and we'll write it as just P, Q, R. We can define the curl of F. So this is given through the, this del operator acting via the cross product on our vector field. So as we said, um, probably the easiest way to remember it is through this sort of three by three determinant trick. All right, so you put IJK across the first row, you put your derivatives across the second row, you put your vector field components across the third, and you multiply everything out. So what you're gonna get is for I, you're gonna get dr dz, minus, or sorry, dr dy, let's fix that, dr dy minus dq dz, the i component, minus, and then it's going to be dr dx minus dp dz in the j component, okay? And then finally, and we're almost at the other side of the board, right? For the k component, we have dp, sorry, dq, dx minus dp, dy, and that's your k component, right? Um, so a few quick things to note, and then we'll, we'll, talk, we'll do an example, and we'll try to talk a little bit about interpretation. Uh, I mentioned uh, in an earlier video that this, this component here is kind of like the 2D curl. If you want to think about curl in two dimensions, right, where we have a vector field with just components P and Q that depend only on X and Y. This is pretty much your object here, and it's actually a scalar quantity. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of a vector quantity, but it's, it's the, you know, the, it's necessarily a vector that points out of the plane. So if you're kind of, you know, if you're working in R2, if that third dimension doesn't exist for you, um, then this doesn't really make sense, right? But this part does. So you can think of the curl as a scalar quantity if you're in R2. In R3, it's a vector quantity. Um, so this is one way to remember the curl. Some people do manage to remember it kind of by actually you know, writing out the components. If you switch the order here, PZ minus DR DX, and then DQ DX minus DP DY. Um, Somehow you can kind of, you can think about sort of cycling through the, through the variables. So, you know, in the X position, you have the Y derivative of the Z component minus the Z derivative of the Y component. In the Y position, you have the Z component of the X derivative. So it's like X, Y, Z, and then Y, Z, X. And then in the Z component, you have the X derivative of the Y component, right? So Z, X, Y. So you kind of have that cycle, X, Y, Z, you sort of circle around cyclic permutations, X, Y, Z, Y, Z, X, um, Z, X, Y. Some people like to remember it that way. Um, so if you can remember it that way and it leads you to just writing this down without having to go through all of this, um, that's fine. Most people like to play it safe and, and write out the determinant and, and, and do it that way. So. Let's try an example. So if I did, so let's say I do f of x, y, z, and let's do something like x, y, z squared, 
y e to the x z and I don't know, let's do y squared minus 2 2 x squared something like that then I can go ahead and I can compute the curl the curl is going to look something like this All right so this depends on x y and z so if we do the if we do the determinant we're going to have i ddx and x y z squared we're going to have j ddy and y e to the x z and then we're going to have k ddz and then y squared minus 2x squared. And now we expand, right? So for the i component, we're going to do d dy of this component here, right? So the y derivative there gives me 2y. z derivative going this way, I'm going to get xy e to the x z, right, minus j times. So now we're going to do x derivative down to here. So d dx of this gives me minus 4x. And then the z derivative coming across to here, 2xyz. And then finally in the k component, we're going to do the x derivative coming here. So y, z, e to the x, uh, oops, sorry, x, z. And then we're going to do the y derivative that way, minus x, z squared. Okay, and so you get this vector, which is fine. We can compute it. It might leave you wondering what exactly you've computed by doing this. Um, so what exactly is this curl measuring, right? Um, so what this measures is it measures a sort of rotational tendency. Um, for your for your vector field, um, some people might refer to this as sort of like a, a it's a vorticity, if you like. Um, so really what's going on is, is and it's, somehow, it's somehow almost easier to picture in the plane. So if you think of the 2D curl, you just think of this function. Um, so in R2, what happens if you think about the 2D curl is that, um, so in R2, you have your vector field, and, and somewhere in vector in, your, in, in the plane, you know, amidst your vector field, um, Maybe you put down like a little, there's a little spinner, right? So you've got a little kind of spinning device. Maybe it's got some like paddles on the end. Okay, so you have this little, this little thing that, you know, imag imagine that this is a fluid. This thing is kind of in the fluid or it's floating in the fluid. Um, the curl is going to measure whether or not, so if we think of this thing as being pushed around by the fluid or if we think of the vector field as a force, the curl is going to measure um, sort of whether this thing is, is going to be caused to spin, right? Um, so it's sort of like, you know, if, you're, if you've anchored your boat in the water and, and, the, and the velocity vector field for the, for the water has curl, um, your boat's going to be kind of spinning around on its anchor, right? So if this curl is positive, you'll see a counterclockwise rotation, right? If the curl is negative, you'll see a clockwise rotation. And, and this kind of, you know, this makes sense if you've kind of played around with these, you know, these, you've done these games with like right hand rules and whatnot. Um, if, you've, if you've encountered the idea of angular velocity before, um, right, if you have this thing and it's, it's, so now if we think of this as kind of here, it's here in, in space, right? and it's spinning around, well, then it, it's spinning on some axis, right? So it has this axis of rotation, 
And you'll notice that the axis of rotation is parallel to the z-axis, right? Um, and so the way, the way you talk about angular velocity is, is you know, it, it's basically, well, the scalar quantity for, for angular speed, you know, is, is just the, the rate at which it's spinning around. And the sort of vector part is, it's going to be the vector which is pointing, you know, along the axis of rotation. And for counterclockwise spin, it'll point up. For a clockwise spin, it will point down, right? So this kind of positive versus negative. So the curl is, is measuring this tendency to make things spin. It's measuring whether or not your vector field, if you think of your vector field as a force field, whether or not it's going to make things spin. Um, this is one way to think about what the curl is doing. Um, one of the things that you might also compute is that um, the curl is also going to, you can use curl to calculate different things. There's one called circulation, right? This tendency, you know, if you think about, if you think about this as like a velocity vector field for a, for a fluid, you know, is, is a particular fluid particle, if you let it go, is it going to start off and go around a closed pass, path, circle around, and come back to where it started, right? Is it going to go around and around and around? It's this idea of circulation, right? Which is somehow almost um, orthogonal to the notion of divergence, right? Divergence is measuring whether things are sort of spreading out or, or, or contracting. Curl is measuring whether you're just kind of going around in circles, right? You're neither expanding nor contracting. You're just going around and around and around. Um, so that's one way to think about these two measures of a vector field. Um, so I think we'll, uh, we'll leave it at this for, uh, for now. We are going to come back. We're going to look at some other examples.